Welcome to McNeil Tech, the wash experience. My name is Scott Ferry and I work for Budco, a distributor of McNeil wash systems. Today we're going to talk about replacing the motor on a side brush. So this procedure is very similar between a small side washer, the RS400, or the uh, van washer, the RS301. Uh, but one thing I want to mention to begin with, there are several different methods of this replacement. Uh, I've talked to some uh, technicians which will actually take the brush off the mounting position and lay it on the floor. Um, I have a good friend that uh, is able to manage getting his hand down inside the hub and loosen the hardware without removing the foam. But the demonstration that we're going to do today is removing all of the components so that each thing can be sh shown separately and all of the components can be shown in turn. When working on any equipment, understand all the hazards associated with the task. Before starting any work, lock out and tag out the equipment. Take all necessary safety precautions including personal protective gear, which includes, but is not limited to, safety glasses, gloves, and footwear. When performing certain maintenance tasks and repairs, it may be necessary to turn off the air supply to the piece of equipment that you're working on. Every site may be different as far as how the air controls are laid out in the equipment room, but each device should have a, you should have the ability to turn off the air to supply to that device. So, for instance, we could turn off the air to the conveyor with a ball valve there and then perform the repair we need to make. But it's also important that when you're finished that you reinstate the air supply by turning that air valve back on. So now that the air is off, we have our lockout tag out in place, we need to prepare the area for the repair. So first of all, a good clean floor to work on is a great idea, especially if we take the foam off and lay it on the floor. Uh, alternately, you could bring in a workbench, uh, set the foam on a workbench, but we're going to uh, do the floor method here. But first of all, we need to take the cap off. The, once we take the cap off of the hub, then we can remove the foam. So I'll go ahead and, and do that. So there's two smaller screws on the side we can remove with a 7 16 inch wrench. And then there's a, uh, the center bolt is the compression bolt. So this is used to compress the foam when it's new. And it's, it's a long bolt. So we're going to go ahead and start bringing this out of there. So now with the cap off, we can remove the foam buns. Now, it's important to do this and take them off and set them upside down in the orientation that they came off the brush. So we've got one bun there. The next bun. And so on. With the foam removed from the hub, we can now remove the hub from the shaft. Now there's four, there's, a, there's some clamps in here on this design. There's a couple of different designs on this brush. Some, there's uh, three bolts that you have to access from the top to remove it from a flange. And other designs have uh, a clamp design inside the hub that holds it to a shaft. And in this case, we have a, uh, the clamp design. So we, remove, we loosen the four screws, which I've already loosened these two, and we'll go ahead and loosen the ones on the bottom. And with those loose, we can go ahead and pull the shaft, or the hub off the shaft. Then we can set it aside. So now we have kind of an exposed area that we can start working on. So next our uh, task is to remove this cover which I've already loosened some of these screws. And then there's this one on the front. So we'll get that cover out of the way. So now at this point, uh, the motor's exposed on the back side here. We can see the, 
uh, bolts that hold, or the screws that hold the motor to the framework of the brush arm. And so our next task is going to be removing the shaft. Now the step now is to remove the shaft from the motor. In the first part of the video I mentioned that some of uh, the technicians I've met over the years actually lay the entire brush down with the, br the foam on the hub to re do this step. And uh, for the purpose of the video we wanted to make sure we removed all that so that we could, uh, uh, so that we could see this entire process in, in action. But I still personally like to remove the foam. So to do that we just take a pipe wrench and or a, some other wrench to grip the uh, shaft and then we go ahead and uh, remove the nut. Oh, got to put that on the right way and remove the nut from the bottom of the shaft. So what I want to show here is on the bottom of the shaft there are some spacer washers that are really important. And so as soon as I get this nut off, you'll see those spacer washers. And that's almost there. Oh, and I also wanted to mention too, uh, we lay it just to protect the pro coat powder coat finish. Uh, we found a mat, or we're using a mat that we can lay on the ground to protect it. But you could use plywood or cardboard or uh, some other material to act as a protecting barrier. Okay, so you'll notice there's three stainless steel washers uh, plus the nut that are used to hold the brush in the bottom of the, or through the motor. So, removing the shaft is just a matter of pulling it out of the motor. So, here we are. So now with the shaft removed, we can go ahead and remove the motor. And so, we'll get ready for that. Now with the shaft removed, we can remove the motor uh, from the framework of the brush. So I've already pre-loosened uh, most of the screws here. But we're going to take, the, take these out and the, what this is going to do is it's going to give us access to the uh, motor mounted junction box for the electrical connection. And so again we've taken the precaution to lock out and tag out this motor and of course the car wash is shut down so nobody can use it uh, but just to be safe so that we have no possible uh, danger from an electrical uh, from electricity at this point okay so now we can bring this motor out so now we have uh, our uh, junction box here so we're going to go ahead and take the cover off and uh, disconnect the electrical. Now whenever the electrical is disconnected it's a great idea to label and mark the wires or take a photograph so that when the connections on the new motor ma are made we have a uh, we have the right connection and it'll spin the right direction. So now that we've got the motor disconnected from the framework this at this point there'll be the actual disconnection and reconnection of the electrical. Uh, we're not actually going to do that, but we're going to, but we want to show the differences here. So you'll notice in the cap that comes with the motor, there's two different schematics. So one is for high voltage and one is for low voltage. So inside the box itself, down here, the, the bridges for the posts need to match the schematic for the incoming power. So in this case, we have 460 volts which means that we have our bridges between these three positions and then we have our incoming power leads coming to three, these three posts here. So these posts are bridged and these posts have the uh, power leads attached. And this is really important because uh, improper voltage connection will 
shorten the life of the motor, if not ruin it completely. Uh, once we make our electrical connections, we reconnect everything and then mount the motor back to the framework of the equipment, which we'll go ahead and do. So now, with the electrical connected to the new motor, I um, want to mention one thing. The, the motors come always oriented the same, or, or in other words, the term is clocked. And so, but depending on whether this is a passenger side or a driver's side side brush or wraparound, uh, this may need to be clocked, which it means that the gearbox right here is turned in, in its orientation to the motor mounted junction box here. Um, so now, but this motor is clocked correctly for reinstallation upon this, uh, the arm shaft and so, or the arm. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So now the motor is reattached to the framework of the arm. We're going to put the shaft in. Now, a couple things with the shaft. It's really important to inspect it and make sure that there's no damage in the keyway of the shaft. But it's important to, uh, for future serviceability of the, uh, the brush and replacement of the motor in the future to do a light coating of anti-seize on the shaft where it goes through the motor. And then also it will save time and effort in the future to apply it to the threads of the shaft as well. So I'm going to put it on the shaft here. And the anti seize will actually hold that key in place as, it's, as the shaft is placed in the motor. So we're going to go ahead and drop the shaft in. And then we can tip this back over carefully and put our hardware back on and tighten it up so that the shaft is really nice and tight and secured inside the motor. So now we've got the uh, shaft reinstalled into the motor and we've got the uh, brush framework assembly reattached to the mounting points. So now we're going to put the hub back on the shaft. Once it's on there, we can take uh, we can take our wrench and just go ahead and tighten up the hardware. With the hub secured to the shaft and the cover plate or the cover over the framework of the brush replaced, we've put a few sections of foam on and we have three more to go. But with this checkerboard pattern, it's important to make sure the cloth is oriented correctly, or the foam, excuse me. So there's two rows, one direction to another, which this is the second of that orientation. Then it goes back to the original direction. So this foam has already been installed once, so it's fairly compressed. If this was new foam, there would be, it would be stacked a little bit higher, in which case the long compression bolt would bring it down into uh, the right amount. So we have our cover plate here, and we have our, the cover plate has to orient a certain direction, so we're going to line that up. And you can see how long the compression bolt is. So we put that in and then we also put in the bolts on the side to secure it. There's... Once the work is complete and the conditions deemed safe, the lockout tagout can be removed.
So now the brush has been totally reassembled and we've removed our lockout tag out and we've reestablished our air connection. So at this point, it's really important to test the rotation of the motor. Now even though we took pictures or labeled wires or took precautions to make sure everything was hooked up correctly, it's still vitally important to make sure you test rotation before uh, opening the car wash. So in this case, we're on the passenger side and so a passenger side brush, side washer, whether it be a high side or a low side, will turn in the counterclockwise direction. The driver's side brushes will turn in the clockwise position or the clockwise direction. And the wraparounds spin opposite of the side washers on the same side. So once you've done that, once you've tested it and it's all good to go, uh, you're ready to wash cars. Thank you for joining us at McNeil Tech, the wash experience. <music>